Welcome back to this edition of On Every Front, showcasing our citizen soldiers and airmen as they answer our nation's call to duty. I'm your host, Army National Guard Staff Sergeant Adam Fishman. When disaster strikes, whether natural or man-made, the initial response is always handled by our local first responders, police, firefighters, and emergency service personnel who are trained and ready to respond at a moment's notice. When first responders need further assistance, local authorities will look to the National Guard to support domestic operations by providing personnel, equipment, and communications infrastructure when called upon. The winter snowstorms that recently blanketed the East Coast, from Georgia to Massachusetts, are a good example of the Guard lending support to local authorities. But when a major catastrophic event occurs, such as Hurricane Sandy or Katrina, the federal government steps in, primarily through the Department of Homeland Security's Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. We recently had an opportunity to sit down with the head of FEMA, Administrator Craig Fugit, to discuss FEMA's relationship with the National Guard over the course of his tenure with the agency. Uh, when disaster strike, one of the first things, one of the first options the governor has when locals need more resources is to call out the Guard. And so we really look at that as one of the key building blocks of our whole community approach to disaster response is the role that Guard plays. And so that relationship isn't just during disasters. We try to build that relationship on a day-to-day -day planning basis, exercise, training, essentially the whole idea of the way you train is the way you're going to war. Same thing with disasters. The way you train and exercise is how you're going to fight the next disaster. As a state director, one of the advantages that Guard brought to the Division of Emergency Management was oftentimes local community knowledge because they lived in their communities. They knew people, they knew their communities, and the other thing they did for us was they brought skill sets that were needed in our operation. Many states don't have the capability to really run 24-hour operations. They're just not staffed that way. So we found that the partnership with the Florida National Guard gave us military skill sets that plugged into the State Emergency Operations Center, as well as the fact that these were teachers, they were lawyers, they were mechanics, you name it, they came from all aspects of the community. And so oftentimes as we approach that response, I think this is probably, you know, people ask, what's the real difference between what the guard offers and what maybe active duty components offer? And I'd have to say it's the civilian life. Uh, guardsmen have a regular life, they have families, they have jobs, they work in their communities. And so the day-to-day -day connections of that. Plus, in many cases, we've had members of elected leadership, sheriffs and others, who understand the state constitutions, roles and responsibilities of local and state government far better than somebody coming from the outside. So this is a historic stream bed profile of this structure. Most recently in Colorado during the flash flooding out there, we had both Title 10 and Guard assets flying rescue missions. It's good to see the National Guard here uh, helping us out. They're backing us up and we're also backing them up. We're working side by side. It's nice to have, it's nice to have help because there's no way we would be able to do this on our own. Now previously before dual status command, the chain of commands would have both been different. And even though if you try to bring coordination in, the reality was you had additional layers to coordinate helicopters working in the same area doing the same rescue operations. That can be both dangerous and inefficient. By having a dual status commander, it was very quick to take the Title 10 forces and the state forces, put them together, operate under a common operating picture, working out of the Joint Operations Center, having one task force direct that, while maintaining unity of effort, but respecting the chain of command, both back to the governor for the state forces and to the Title 10 forces back to the president. Given the current fiscal challenges and worldwide threats, I believe the National Guard must be maintained as an operational force. I think for the Guard, though, this is an extraordinary role to be sitting in the tank, being part of the Joint Chiefs, looking not only at domestic operations, but also the support of the Guard as part of the total force package. I think it's also given the tank, the other Chiefs, an insight into domestic operations, disaster response, and the Guard's day-to-day -day mission that I don't think they always saw. What you saw in Boston is the result of a lot of planning for efforts to deal with the potential of this threat, but more realistically, it was because these were support troops brought in for the Boston Marathon. And it was that ability to quickly shift from a planned event into an immediate response, 
which has been the hallmark of the Guard, whether it's been the quick reaction forces that are on standby for civil disturbances, or the planned events where the Guard is given advance notices there to when you get that call to report into your armory that you have a deployment that's coming up and you need to be somewhere quick. So again, I think it demonstrates that although the Guard's mission was supporting the Boston Marathon, it quickly shifted into there was an attack, there was a plan, people knew what their roles and responsibilities were, and they were able to support the local responders. For more of our conversation with Administrator Fugit, you can go to our YouTube page, which has an extended version of this interview. Before we go, we would like to thank Administrator Fugit for setting aside the time for our interview, and also to thank you for watching this edition of On Every Front. Whether at home or abroad, your National Guard is everywhere America needs us to be. Always ready, always there.